A very warm welcome to the first part of the heat series. In this video, we are going to learn about what is heat energy, the units of heat energy, temperature and various forms of measurement of temperature. So, without any further delay, let's solve this guy. In the previous chapter where we have learned about various forms of energy, we already knew that energy is the ability to do some kind of work. So what is heat? Heat is a very useful and important form of energy. We receive the heat energy which is also called the solar energy from the sun to sustain our life. Not only us, all the living world, the entire living world captures the solar energy and convert it into their life processes to gain energy and to continue living. Without the sun's heat energy, our planet would have been frozen and absolutely lifeless. So, we can say that heat is a very important and useful form of energy. So, let's come to the definition of heat. What is heat? When a hot body and a cold body come in contact with each other, there is a type of energy, a particular form of energy that flows from the hotter body. This is very important, from the hotter body to the colder body. This energy is called heat energy. So from here, you can very well understand, heat energy always travels from the hotter body or the body having the greater temperature to the colder body that is to the body which is having a lower temperature. An object becomes hotter when heat energy flows inside it. Similarly, when heat energy travels out from an object, it becomes colder. The sun is the most important natural source of energy in this planet Earth and heat can also be produced from various other sources. Some of them are electricity, magnetism, electromagnetism and also by various forms of friction. So how do we measure heat energy? The quantity of heat supplied by a body or received by a body is measured either in calories or in joules. These are the two basic units to measure the amount of heat energy that is inside a body or that is given out by a body. So the SI unit that is system international unit of heat is joule. The CGS unit that is centimeter gram second unit of heat is calorie. Both are written in this way. Joule is written in small letters. If we write the symbol then you can use the capital J and calorie is written also in small letters and the symbol is cal. Now what is this calorie? Calorie, the word calorie means heat. It's a very old word which means heat. The definition of calorie is one calorie of heat energy is that particular amount of energy which is required to raise, to uprise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So what are the important points in this definition? One calorie of heat energy is that amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Okay, so this is the definition of calorie. Now, how is calorie and joule interrelated with each other? One calorie is equal to 4.2 joules and one kilocalorie which is written as k cal is 1000 calorie and if that gets converted into joule it becomes 4200 that is 4200 joules as we are talking about heat energy the very common thing that comes into our mind is fire that has both heat and light now how does fire occurs during the process of burning or combustion, if you are burning something, a significant amount of heat and light is released equally. Both heat and light is released when we are burning something. This released heat and light comes out in the form of 
flames this flames is called fire so we can see during the process of burning or combustion the amount of heat and light released together in the form of flames is called fire so how does this process of combustion occurs combustion occurs when two or more molecules exchange electrons amongst themselves during certain conditions to form new compounds that is new molecules at that point of time they release a lot of heat energy and also at some point of time depending on the nature of the molecules light energy as well it also as it releases both heat and light we can also find it in our day to day example say for example when the water is boiling at some point of time before it gets converted into steam if we put our hand on that boiling water just above the boiling water we can feel the heat that is coming out that means the water is changing its state from one state to another whether it's changing its state or whether it's forming new molecules there is always a release of heat here this is how the process of combustion occurs the discovery of the use of fire was one of the very early human discoveries which was made near about in the stone age when early man discovered that fire can be used to cook food and cook food is healthier and tastier and very easy to digest than the raw food it was the beginning and the development of human civilization fire was also used to keep the caves warm to keep away the wild animals and later on the fire was used to make pottery in the process of smelting not all substances can burn very easily in this topic there are two kinds of substances basically all substances can be categorized into two types first is inflammable substance what are those substances that can be burned or catch fire very easily example wood paper cloth any kind of fuels coal petrol diesel kerosene etc and also the lpg gas that we use at our homes these all are inflammable substances they catch fire very easily the next category is the non flammable substances just the opposite they cannot be burned or those who do not catch fire easily examples would be sand stone metals water at many places especially in the petrol pumps if you notice you will find buckets of sand are put sand is such an inflammable non flammable substance that it is also used as a fire extinguisher along with water and other substances though we know how to measure heat energy of a body in terms of joules or calories but that measurement does not give us the amount of hotness or coldness present inside the body that means how hot an object is or how cold it is how much cold it is we don't get that idea from the measurement of heat energy for that we have a separate quantity altogether that quantity is known as temperature this is the basic difference between heat and temperature heat is the form of energy the amount of energy present inside the body is calculated or is measured when we find out the heat energy but how much hot or cold a body is that for that we need the quantity called temperature what is temperature it is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body and its si unit is kelvin so how to measure temperature the temperature of a body is measured by using an instrument called thermometer it's the instrument used to measure the temperature of a body now a basic thermometer has three part if you see in the diagram the first part is the bulb which is at one end of the tube this is the part that actually touches the object it contains either mercury or alcohol depending on the type of thermometer the second is the steam it is a glass capillary tube through which the mercury or alcohol rises or falls through a liquid column 
as the object around the bulb warms or cools accordingly the third and the final part of the thermometer is the scale that is the graduations marked all throughout the thermometer it's the scale marked on the stem which indicates the temperature of the substance now there are different scales of thermometer the main three scales are celsius scale the kelvin scale and the fahrenheit scale now each division in the thermometer is taken as one unit measurement of temperature according to that particular scale the first scale and the most widespread scale of thermometer is the celsius scale what is a celsius scale it is a scale of thermometer whose unit is degree celsius the freezing point of water that is 0 degree celsius is the scale's lowest point and the boiling point of water that is 100 degree celsius is its highest point and the difference between the lowest and the highest point is divided into 100 equal parts okay the temperature in between is divided into 100 equal parts this particular scale of thermometer is invented was invented and developed by anders celsius the next is the fahrenheit scale what is fahrenheit scale fahrenheit scale is another scale of thermometer where the unit is degree fahrenheit as we have seen in the celsius scale its degree was its unit was degree celsius here the unit is degree fahrenheit the freezing point of water here is 32 degree fahrenheit which is the lowest end of the scale and the highest end is the boiling point of water which is 212 degree fahrenheit next the temperature in between these two scales the lowest end that is 32 degree fahrenheit to the highest scale that is 212 degree fahrenheit each unit is divided into 180 equal parts all right it is divided into 180 equal parts and this scale is invented and developed by the scientist daniel gabriel fahrenheit from his name we have the name of the fahrenheit scale the last and the final scale of temperature is also its si unit which is the kelvin scale its unit is kelvin it is also known as the absolute scale of temperature here the freezing point of water is 273.13 kelvin which is the lowest end and the boiling point of water is 373.15 kelvin which is the highest end the temperature in between the lowest end and the highest end is divided into 100 equal parts just like the celsius scale and this is invented and developed by lord kelvin from whom the name kelvin scale is used zero kelvin the temperature zero kelvin which is also known as absolute zero it is the lowest attainable temperature in this entire universe how do we convert from one scale to another now the first conversion is fahrenheit and celsius these two can be interconverted to each other by using this particular formula which is c by 5 is equal to f minus 32 by 9 whether the temperature is given in celsius or fahrenheit using this formula you can convert it into the other scale the second conversion is celsius and kelvin kelvin is equal to k is equal to degree celsius plus 273 using this particular formula whether the temperature is given in degree celsius or kelvin you can convert it into either way what are the various types of thermometer there are mainly three types of thermometer let's come to the first type which is clinical thermometer clinical thermometer as you can see in the diagram it's used to measure the temperature of a human body the normal temperature of a human body is around 37 degree celsius or if we convert it into fahrenheit it is 98.6 degree fahrenheit this value might change depending upon the age of a person depending upon the amount of physical activity he is currently doing etc 
it the temperature might increase or decrease if the person is not well the second type of thermometer is the digital thermometer like clinical thermometer the digital thermometer does not contain mercury hence there is no risk of mercury being released on breakage if a clinical thermometer breaks the mercury inside it may cause poisonous effects but this risk can be avoided by if you use a digital thermometer it is easier to read in this type than in the conventional thermometer as the temperature is shown as a number on the display the third and the final type of thermometer is the laboratory thermometer laboratory thermometers are mostly used in laboratories for various scientific experiments it can be used to measure temp uh, measure the temperature very high or very low as its range starts from minus 10 degree celsius to 110 degree celsius but we need to be very very careful while using both the clinical and laboratory thermometer there are certain precautions which need which is needed to be taken while using a clinical thermometer the first and the foremost precaution is to wash the clinical thermometer before and after its use as it is used very intimately with our body and it is also advised to use it with a with an antiseptic lotion the second precaution is we should ensure before using the thermometer the clinical thermometer that the mercury level should either be below 35 degree celsius or 95 degree fahrenheit not more than that the thermometer should be read keeping the level of mercury directly with the line of sight not above not below or we may get incorrect reading from the thermometer we should never touch the bulb of the thermometer while taking a reading we should always hold its stem instead of holding the bulb or else our fingertips might affect the temperature that we are taking from and also as it has a glass body and filled with mercury in its bulb it should be handled with extreme care so that no breakage or spillage of mercury can occur Similar precautions should also be taken while using a laboratory thermometer or else it also might break and spill some of its fluid outside which might be harmful for the user.